Hey, what's up? This is Accountant here. For quite a few years now, my taste in fashion and my interests have been very much around techwear in various incarnations. And over this time, I've shared lots of different styles and examples and techwear outfits, but often with a fair aesthetic difference between all of these things and also differing levels of functionality to the point where, for me at least, techwear feels like as much a lens through which to view a kind of particular style of fashion or to choose the kind of things that you're wearing as much as it does a particular nailed down aesthetic. Hopefully that's something that comes across in the variety of things that we talk about on this channel, but I suppose it leads to a lot of people asking now, like how do you build a techwear outfit or what is that thought process behind building a techwear outfit? We're going to talk about exactly that. Originally I wrote this video as a step-by-step -step process, almost a kind of guide. Um, but I ended up scrapping the whole thing for two reasons. Firstly, there are no rules, there is no checklist you have to follow. This is not teaching men's fashion where you have to have four dangly straps, one cobra buckle, one Errolson bobblehead in the pocket to assemble as many techwear outfit points as possible. It just doesn't work like that. And secondly, this is just my opinion. I am not the objective source of techwear truth, and I think if I made a kind of list or a step-by-step -step guide, the implication would be that that is the correct or that is the standard to do things. But in reality, no such standard exists. With that in mind, I thought it would be more productive instead to go through some of the recent outfits that I have shared on Instagram and thinking about what was my thought process when I put those outfits together. And following that, what common factors did we notice? Is there some kind of idea or some kind of process that I am consistently following or having in my mind when I am putting this stuff together? And hopefully that will be more valuable, more as a source of inspiration, I suppose, than a painting by numbers set of this is how you do it. So let's kick off right away with this outfit here. I think for a lot of people, this is the kind of thing that they want to achieve with techwear. So it kind of feels like a good place to start. The J1A GTKP, of course, a very overtly looking technical item. It's very kind of centralizing as well. It has a lot of presence, especially with that big central yellow pocket there. Certainly does grab a lot of attention, but I really fancied wearing it that day. So that was what went on first. And now I think the temptation here, when you've got something like this, that is, you know, it's a pretty loud item, is to think, well, I don't want to go too crazy with everything else. I want to keep everything else nice and subdued or else, you know, the outfit will be too much. It'll be too loud. But actually, I wanted to make sure that the other things I was wearing kind of brought the same energy to the table. Otherwise, you might have one item that kind of feels a bit out of place amongst a lot of other you know, relatively subdued pieces. So on that basis, I ended up going for the P23 TSCH. And although that nice blue color is one of the first things that I thought of here, because I thought it would go quite nicely with the blue of the J1, there are quite a few other factors here as well. Notably, you've got all of the kind of contrast areas on the P23. All of those are black, and that's kind of similar to the J1, which has this kind of black chest area up here. Similarly, on the P23, you've got the black webbing, you've got the black drawstrings, you've got the black cuffs as well. There's very much a similar kind of color theme um, not just about kind of matching colors specifically. But of course, they're not covered in their own colorful accents like that yellow pocket of the J1. Otherwise, I think things really would start getting too much. But it's not just about that, and it's not just about those contrast black elements either, but it's about the kind of aesthetic, I suppose, busyness or that technical look that they bring to the table. The webbing of the P23, of course, um, it kind of matches the technical nature of the J1 with those extra pockets and things. And I kind of built that out as well. I added a carabiner on one side. I've got a mod from Saintsys on the other side, one of the little pouches that you can put on kind of bags or whatever you want, really. To try and make this feel like it was ready for anything, like you could attach a whole bunch of things or you could carry pretty much anything that you wanted. And it kind of works with that Death Stranding kind of vibe, I suppose, which is uh, very much the theme of that game. The boots further that ready for anything kind of vibe. And then at the end, I chucked on this Hamkus holster because I think it just feels like that extra little piece on the top, which again, furthers that idea of preparedness, of just having that extra little bit of capacity that you might not otherwise have, but without going kind of too far over the top. So I suppose the real thing that drove this was thinking about pieces which had that extra level of technical functionality, and then thinking about where I could make extra additions to that, whether that be the, the little pouch thing, whether that be the Hamkus holster, things that yeah kind of push that look even further without going into cosplay territory. At the end of the day, some of these things here are surplus to requirements. 
I don't literally need a holster on my person at all times, nice as it is to be able to dispense snacks at a moment's notice. But at the same time, none of those things are getting in the way of me being comfortable or doing the things that I need to do. And I think that's a very important distinction to make between an outfit like this and, you know, attaching knee pads to yourself, for example. Let's look here at outfit number two. So for this one, I actually started feet first. Um, and that was because I just got the Air Force One GTXs and frankly, I wanted to wear them out and uh, give them a bit of a road test before I did the review on them. Let's be honest, a shoe like this is a pretty blank slate. They're fairly easy to wear. They are not too kind of centralizing or attention grabbing and neither are they kind of super futuristic to be honest. So I kind of, you know, had a lot to work with there, I suppose. So normally when I pick out a pair of shoes first, I will next think, what is a nice pair of pants that's gonna look good here? You know, pan shoe interaction, all that kind of stuff. So I went for the Garuda Assassa pants. These, uh, I've had these for quite a few years now, but they've been very much a perennial favorite. Color, obviously not an issue. They have a little bit of room in them, so they're not like skin tight, so they don't make the Air Force Ones look like clown shoes. And they kind of have a similar vibe in that they're pretty low key, they're not really attention grabbing, but they have that subtle kind of performance element that's partly due to the material here and partly due to you've got these kind of double layered pockets, which are quite handy. And let's not forget there's some quite interesting tailoring on the Assassin, which is the kind of thing that you would only notice at a close look. And at the same time for the wearer, makes them very comfortable and they've got a nice bit of articulation there. So it's about that kind of subtle, easy wearing kind of thing. Now we've got a pretty solid base, but there's nothing that's too kind of eye-catching here. And I feel like therefore we needed something that was a little bit more fun on the top half. Otherwise things would maybe just be looking a little bit too plain. So for that reason, I took a look at the Stone Island Thermosensitive Jacket. That's because of that really complex and attention grabbing pattern, but also like the other pieces, it has that little bit of low key functionality in that yes, this is kind of water resistant, despite not looking like big chunky Gore-Tex shell and the thermosensitive fabric. That to me, you know, that's a bit of technical functionality as well, although it is designed to provide an interesting look rather than kind of performance as such. But a few things I think make this a really good match. Not only is that color, it's still kind of dark, so it's not like it's a really weird contrast with the relatively plain black things. It sticks out, but not in a bad way. And also the cut of this is not dissimilar to the pants in that it's fairly flattering and it's fairly slim as well. So there's a very clear similarity in these two things while still allowing that one element in terms of the color and the pattern to really shine. Now I've got the main components, we just got to fill out some of the other bits. So it was actually quite quite cold, so I chucked underneath the jacket the acronym J89. I think it's a nice kind of contrast in texture here, and again it's kind of classic looking in that it's got that kind of cardigan shape to it, and you can flip the neck up as well, so it gives it this little bit of kind of protection there and uh, it's just really comfortable, frankly. The Alpha Direct material also doesn't bulk out the jacket too much while still providing some nice warmth, so it allowed us to keep that nice kind of slim look. And then for the bag, I went for the Aoku Tiger Shard Camo Messenger Bag, the one that's just chilling back there. I could have gone for something really plain and simple here, but I think similarly to the first outfit, when you've got pieces, you know, like the Stone Island jacket that kind of have a lot of energy to them, that are quite attention grabbing, actually adding something else which has that same level of energy means that neither one of them is really kind of over centralizing the outfit. And they, I think they peacefully can coexist here. And that's generally why I like to wear that Aoku messenger bag with non-black shells and things that are a bit more crazy and colorful and interesting. I also think a bag is a great accessory if you are trying to communicate that technical look, you know, just having that nice strap going across there, it adds a little bit of complexity, doesn't it? And I think without having a bag with this outfit, it would actually end up looking really simple. So I think that was definitely a useful inclusion for that reason, you know, just, just adds a little bit of spice on top. Now we're moving on to the third outfit, and I think this one here is a good example that techwear more refers to a set of characteristics or a mindset if you want to be pretentious about it, as opposed to a specific look. This day was pretty dry but also quite cold, so I thought the S Akita was the perfect choice here, giving you that nice little bit of warmth, but I don't need a fully featured Gore-Tex shell. Where I went out for a walk to, it was also pretty muddy, so the Nike SFBs are pretty much my number one choice for anything excessively muddy. So with those two pieces, you're already 
already seeing a lot of there's there's a big military influence there i think you've got the bomber jacket you got the military boots so i was kind of thinking along those lines how can i fill that out with the other stuff that i'm wearing this is partly done through the slightly more relaxed fitting but still quite structured thanks to the stocks material um on von leve orange there and also the very structured t-shirt in the form of the valence frame tee both of these came in this nice olive color which of course is a very kind of military inspired thing i think it helps evoke that outdoor and ruggedized feel in a similar way to the bomber jacket and the boots this still clearly looks very modern and very performance focused to me but without relying at all on large amounts of pockets and straps and accessories and stuff like that so it really is to me quite a different look to the other things that we've seen in this video so far i did want to add something a little bit more than this though just to again kind of stop it looking a bit too plain so i went for the little acronym usb that came with the rmt01 i'm wearing this as a pendant just to give a little bit of visual interest kind of up here in the chest area to stop the cargo pockets being too centralizing I think from these there's definitely a few common factors, things that I am regularly doing. One of those is I always seem to start with there's that one piece that I really want to wear for some reason. It might be because it's really appropriate for the occasion, or it might just be because it's new or because I think it's cool and I want to wear it. I think that's a really good place to start, honestly. I think fashion is about having a bit of fun and it's about, you know, feeling self-confident and feeling cool and all that kind of thing. And if you're picking out that one piece at the start that you're like, yeah, that is going to make me feel good today. Like, I really fancy wearing that. Then... Where better to start than that? From there, I'm kind of thinking, what makes this item the way that it is? Is it super futuristic? Is it very technical looking? Is it very low key? What's the fit of it like? What, what kind of shape is it? Is it really unconventional? Is it really normal? And those are the kind of things that you can use to select accompanying pieces that will work nicely and kind of create some kind of synergy that runs a little bit deeper than, you know, are they all black? Do the blacks match? Or is there a kind of, you know, do we have to match up the yellow bit with something else that's yellow? Sometimes that leads to an overtly technical looking outfit. Sometimes it leads to something that is a little bit more simple and a bit more clean. And then on the fit, sometimes that leads to a very slim, a very sleek outfit. Sometimes it leads to exactly the opposite. And you've got loads of like oversized pieces and very exaggerated proportions and things that really kind of look very unconventional in a number of ways neither of those sides is necessarily better than the other it just depends on what you start with and then what you feel like wearing what kind of things you want to run with i think approaching things with that in mind like what items have the right feeling compared to that central item that i really want to wear that helps unlock the right options because you're not caught up too much thinking like i've got my tech wear jacket now i need my tech wear shoes you don't need to score any tech wear points you don't need to think of things on that basis because some of the things that match up they might not be described as typically tech wear items. You might find a jacket that looks really cool that maybe it fits more into a streetwear category by itself. Maybe it's more minimalist. Maybe it fits into Japanese fashion. You get the idea. Whether every individual piece could be described exclusively as tech wear or not doesn't really matter too much because what's more important is developing that cohesion between multiple items. Often at the end, I seem to add that one more thing to an outfit to kind of elevate it past the purely functional into something that is more designed designed for aesthetics or for a bit of visual flair. Even in tech wear where it feels like you have to justify what you're wearing right down to the underwear, there's nothing wrong with picking some stuff out because you want to wear it and because it looks cool or because you think it adds something aesthetically to the outfit, so long as it's not actively getting in the way. In all these cases, the Hamkus holster, the messenger bag, the acronym USB, I didn't necessarily need to have all of those items, but I think all of them added something by their presence. But at the same time, at the end of the day, they are just accessories. They are not there taking over or centralizing the outfit they're just that little bit of you know extra topping those things are the little sprinkles on top of the ice cream and i think it's important to have that but of course you don't want to end up shoveling the sprinkles on or else you do end up in that kind of war core space where we've got people wearing bags on top of other bags and yeah the knee pads thing and, and chains and that's when things you know, that's not really in the ethos of tech wear to me and that these things seem to be getting in the way more than they would actually be kind of useful and frankly enjoyable to wear. 
I think there are loads of different things you could think about when you're putting together an outfit, certainly far more than I've talked about in this video. But similarly, it doesn't have to be this super conscious, crafted in the lab approach either. A lot of these decisions or processes that I've talked about in this video were not really things that I was consciously thinking about or articulating at the time. It was very much a, I fancy wearing this thing, this thing seems to work as well, I'll wear them both together. And it's only now that I'm looking back that I'm kind of thinking, yeah, thinking about it, that was the reason that I picked that out in particular. Overthinking things is definitely possible, and I realize the irony of me saying that at the back end of, you know, like a 12 minute plus video. So I'm sorry I can't give you the Antoine epic five step program to wearing tech ninja outfits, but I hope you found this video of some kind of interest or value nonetheless. But uh, I'd be interested to hear if you've got any kind of, if you've got a method, I suppose, of putting together these kinds of outfits, or whether you just kind of take the fly by wire approach, or maybe you're in the fortunate position where you can just pretty much pick out anything from your wardrobe, chuck it together, and it just works. That's certainly an enviable position to be in. Sadly, I'm too far off the deep end for that, and I've just got too many things that have totally different looks to them, but you can still save yourselves. That's everything from me on this topic. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to hit that like button. It is super important and helpful for the channel. And uh, thank you for watching. And of course, we will be back next week with another video. I'm not actually sure when this video is going to come out because I'm currently waiting on the new size of the monitor to show up so I can get the video review out on that one, which I'm super looking forward to and hopefully you guys are as well. Um, but yeah, there's going to be a bunch of other stuff in the pipeline too. So this will kind of pop in, I'm sure, when that other like time sensitive stuff is a little bit more out of the way. But if you've got anything that you want to see, I suppose, as we're coming into the Christmas period, maybe you want to make some fun Christmas pickups, then uh, yeah, let me know whether that be some kind of individual product review type stuff, whether you more like that roundup based content, or things that are more like this, which are the more, I don't know, like theoretical, I suppose. Either way, let me know what you think, but thanks for making it all the way to the end of the video. And if you want to see some more, you haven't watched every single video that I've ever made yet, then there's going to be links to some of those up at the top. And if you haven't subscribed yet, then definitely consider doing so because we've got more content coming out every week cool reviews, cool other stuff. I genuinely have loads of different ideas in the pipeline, it's just a case of which one goes out first. Get them out of my brain and onto the video camera. Anyway, that's everything from me, so uh, yeah, see you next week.